Hello everyone and welcome to another knife review and today we're going to be exploring the topic of flipper knives. What makes a great flipper knife? We're going to be exploring the six most important characteristics of knives that allow them to be a great flipper knife. And then at the end we're going to be identifying various knives and the characteristics that make them a great flipper knife. And we're going to do it in the format of an Academy Award. So stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. First of all, we're going to go over the six factors I believe are important for a, a good flipper knife. The first being a good deployment angle. The second, a good detent. The third, a flipper tab that has a good shape and design. The fourth, a pivot. Is it a bearing or is it washers? And the fifth, does it have a place for thumb counter traction? And then lastly, the sixth, uh, does it have distal weighting of the blade for centripetal force? So let's start with the deployment angle. The deployment angle is whenever you depress depress fully the flipper tab, what is the angle between the knife and the blade? That we're going to call the deployment angle. And the larger the deployment angle, the better the knife's going to flip. And I'm going to give you some examples of some great deployment angles. This is the Browse Razor Black. There are two basic factors that contribute to the deployment angle. First of all, is the flipper tab forward relative to the pivot? And as you can tell, Browse has its flipper tab forward to the pivot, and it gets a great deployment angle. It's almost a full 90 degree angle here. There are other knives that don't do as great of job. I'm going to take the Gavco Baby Spinner. We're going to measure its deployment angle. As you can see, there's a big difference. This is maybe a 30 degree deployment angle, whereas the brow should get almost a full 90 degrees. We're going to call it an 85 to 80 degree deployment angle. So the farther you can mechanically push a blade out, and the less you have to rely on centripetal force, the better flipper it's going to be. Now Gavco makes a very good flipper, but it isn't because of the deployment angle. It's because of their detent, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But the part that I wanted to recognize first is that your flipper tab needs to be forward of the pivot. The second thing that causes a knife to have a great deployment angle is the length of your flipper. And I'm going to get this Medford 187, which has the longest flipper tab I know of. This is looks like a Cobra. It is completely ridiculous. It makes me giggle just thinking about it. It is a full half inch long, but whenever you depress this, and also notice it's at least neutral with the pivot to a little bit forward, when you completely depress the flipper tab, again, you get a deployment angle that very nearly approaches 90 degrees just like the Browse does. So those are great deployment angles, and then I'll give you a, an example of one that isn't as good a deployment angle right there. So we want something that has a forward flipper tab and a long flipper tab to give you a good deployment angle, and that's the first thing we look for. Um, okay, the second thing is a strong detent. The stronger the detent, the better the flipping movement. And that's what Browse does, uh, excuse me, Gavco does really well. Even though it puts its flipper tab behind the pivot, its detent is so good that whenever you break the detent, you cannot keep it from fully deploying it has one of the best detents in the industry. And I'm going to bring out a couple of knives that don't have as good of detents as the Gavco. Some of the worst detents in the industry, I'm going to bring out the Positron from Spider Crow. It really has a weak detent and you pop it and it just doesn't flip out of the way enough. I really press hard and concentrate, I can get the Positron to flip, but really it's one of the poorest uh, flippers both in detent and in deployment angle. The other one that has a weak detent is the Lion Steel TRE. They tried to straddle a fence on did they want to make it a thun stud deployer or did they want to make it a flipper. As a result they have a, a weak detent so sometimes you don't always get the blade all the way out because the detent's just a little bit weak. The next aspect of a knife that makes a good flipper I'd like to talk to you about is the flipper tab shape and design. And I want to give you an example of a knife I think is a great one. This is an Alamic Wayfarer 24-7, and the flipper design opposes your thumb. It comes against you. It's very near vertical, and as a result, the Alamic Wayfarer is a wonderful flipper. The Kaiser Dukes is another example of this. 
the flipper tab comes up almost vertically and reaches out there to meet you and it is a wonderful flipper. There's a knife very similar to the Kaiser Dukes. It is the flashbang, however, instead of being vertical, it's more of a horizontal one. And it makes the flipping on this, it's still a good flipper, but it isn't quite as good as the Kaiser Dukes. Because the flipper tab pulls away from you. I'm going to give you an example of what I think is a poor design of a flipper tab, and that is the Ferrum Forge NAT. Now, I'm not uh, knocking Ferrum Forge. They have a flipper tab that comes up more vertical in their Deity model, but the intac just goes away from you. As a result, when you're trying to oppose it, first of all, it doesn't have any jimping either, but when you're trying to deploy it, oftentimes your thumb can just slide off because instead of coming up to meet you and being more vertical in orientation, it falls away and is more horizontal. So you, you try to flip it, and you really can't. You really have to concentrate and, uh, yeah, and then you can get it. But you shouldn't have to fight against your flipper tab. Your flipper tab should be your friend. It should be more vertical in orientation. The jimping should be good, too. And I'm going to give the example of a knife that I think has excellent jimping. And the jimping needs to be subtle and not abrasive. This is the Curtis F3, and I just want to give you an example of the jimping. It's very fine, very subtle, and again, it has a more vertical uh, flipper tab in design, and that makes the... Uh, the Curtis F3, a wonderful flipper, and it doesn't hurt your finger. I'm going to show you a knife that I consider has too abrasive, too aggressive of jimping, and it really hurts your finger. And this is the XM18 by Hinder. This is a 3-inch version, but see how aggressive that jimping is? And whenever you flip the tab, first of all, as you notice, the flipper tab is behind the pivot, so that's a no-no there, too. Uh, you, you push it, and it's hard to get it out. But if you do it all day, it really makes your fingers sore because the uh, jimping is just a little aggressive. You can get a file and file it down and make it a little smoother, but I always hate to adjust nice. I feel like it's similar to putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. This maker is an expert and he puts such time into it. I hate to adjust his knife. So makers, you guys, make your jimping subtle. It should be able to grip it, but it shouldn't hurt you whenever you use it. The fourth component of a great flipper knife I would like to discuss is the nature of the pivot. As a rule, bearings are better than washers, and multi-row bearing knives are better flippers than single row bearing knives. I'm going to start off with a washer-based knife, and I hope I don't feel like I'm picking on hinder or knives, but they're washer-based, and it's a design choice. They feel like they're easier to maintain than bearing knives, but they sacrifice a little bit on their ability to flip. As you can tell, washers just have more surface contact and uh, more friction, so they don't flip quite as well, and you can get them to flip. Sometimes you just have to use a little bit of wrist. One of the loveliest knives as far as the flipping action with little resistance is the Shirogorov Neon, and it not only uses a single row of bearings, it has a multi-row bearing system, and it has a wonderful action, both flipping and then returning to its place. It'll just return with gravity. It's a joy to flip and a joy to play with. Uh, the IKBS uh, also makes a multi-bearing system, and Andre Thorburn in his A3 uses it. I'll put a picture up there. It has a special symbol that differentiates the multi-row bearing IKBS uh, from a single row bearing IKBS. And the Thorburn knives, as well as the Shirogorov knives with the multi-row bearing systems, have some of the best actions and best flipping actions in knifedom. The fifth characteristic I would like to discuss on what makes a knife a great flipper is the presence of thumb counter traction. And I have a couple of knives here that are good examples of this that make them great flippers. This is the Spider Coast Southern. This particular one has the smock modification. Modification, It's cut down a little bit. But the handle scales are the same. And one of the criticisms against the Southern is that it has asymmetric handle scales. As you can tell, the lock bar side is a little thinner and the show side is a little bit thicker. But I really love it because it gives my thumb a place to rest and you can really flick it out there good because you have counter traction with your thumb. And I'm going to bring in a Shirogorov, one of the thin knives. And you have to use it in a pinch grip. 
and you just have to use your finger. And so really, the beauty of the Shirogorov is the multi-row bearing system, and so just you don't need that counter traction with the Shirogorov. But whenever you use the Spider Coast Southern, you got a good place to put your thumb, and bam, it just flips out there. The other knife that has a good place for counter traction is the Medford 187. It's called the 187 because the blade and both handle scales are 187th of 1,000th inch thick, and it's a monster thick, and this one has the half-inch flipper tab that's placed ahead of the pivot. So as a result, man, this blade can really pop out there, and you can rest your thumb on that handle scale. You don't have to pinch it and just place that. You can get some counter traction and really flip it out there. So having a place for your thumb counter traction is another positive attribute for a great flipper knife. The sixth and last component that I would like to talk about that causes a blade to be a great flipper is if it is weighted on the end of the blade or the distal aspect of the blade. As you know, Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest stays at rest. And those of us who have teenagers know that this is true because when they're resting on the sofa, it's hard to get them up and get them out mowing the lawn. You have to be an unbalanced force. But the important part for us in today's conversation is the second part of Newton's first law of motion, which is an object at motion stays in motion with the same speed and direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. And so I'm showing you a picture of the Grimm's Mo Norseman. As you can tell, it is different. Most blades like the Shirogorov here, start very thick at the base and then they taper distally to a thin end and tip. However, the Norseman is distinct in that it gets thicker at its tip. As a result, whenever you put the energy into getting that blade in motion, the centripetal force that the end of the blade has will carry it to full deployment and it'll be a great flipper. It's just one of the characteristics distinctive to it. And now we're going to take time for the Academy Awards of Knifedom. First award goes to the most creative flipper design, and the winner of this is Gustavo Cecchini. I'm probably mispronouncing the knife of the name of GTC Knives. He invented the SLT design, which is the spring-loaded tab design. The beauty of this design is that the tab does not stick out and function as a pocket pecker, uh, but it lays flat until you choose to lift it up and deploy the knife. It is used on his airborne and horsepower designs. Also this year in 2017, Zero Tolerance is coming out with the GTC 0055, which has a three and three quarter inch blade, which employs the SLT, the spring loaded tab design. It's a wonderful design and the uh, knife that you're seeing now is the Zero Tolerance 055 that employs it. So good job, Gustavo Caccini. The second Academy Award of Knifedom I would like to award for the hardest forward flipping knives. And this is a three-way tie of the knives that I have. The first is the Zero Tolerance 0450. And this year the 0460 is coming out. It's also a Sienkiewicz design but it is a very hard flipping knife. Note that the flipper tab has some mild jimping that grips your finger well. It's forward of the pivot and it just flies out like a rocket. The other one that's tied for first for this category is the Brad Southerd with a smock modification. It has a place for thumb counter traction and it flies out great. And then the third one tied for first place is the Alamic Wayfarer 24-7. This is the acid rain version. It's just a beautiful knife. But because the flipper tab really comes to oppose your finger, it just flies out great and it's on bearings. All three of these knives are on bearings. The third Academy Award of Knifedom I would like to award would be to the Medford 187. And I'm going to call this award the Cuthwack Award. The, the Medford 187 has this obscenely long flipper tab and is placed forward of the pivot, but the mass of the knife gives it this wonderful kathwack sound whenever you deploy it. Do you hear that? Oh my goodness. It is 
powerful. This is one of the most powerful flippers you can get just because of the length and placement of the flipper tab in conjunction with the sheer weight and heft of the blade. And my knife channel is devoted really to having the lightest and best knives, so really this doesn't fit. But if ever I'm feeling sad, I'll get the Medford 187 and just hear that kathwack and just makes me happy. The next Knife Academy Award I would like to give out is in the category of Best Budget Flipper, and it's going to be a two-way tie on this one. The first entry and winner is going to be the CH3001. It's a Chinese-made knife that lives in obscurity, but it has a wonderful action. It free falls, and it's because of its flipper design and detent, it is a wonderful flipper. And the other tie entrant is the Kaiser Dukes. I love this knife. It has this wonderful G10 handle scales, and it's one of the hardest flipping knives that I have. So these two are tied for the best budget flipper. The CH3001 comes in from DH Gate at about $50 to $60, and the Kaiser is currently running as of March 2017 at about $69 on the web. The fifth Academy Award of Knifedom goes for the best detent design. And this design uh, goes to the Hoback Roller Detent. I have uh, the best and lightest Hoback knife, which is the MK Ultra. Unfortunately, it doesn't use the Hoback Roller Detent. However, the Ferrum Forward Nige, the Intac, does have the Hoback Roller Detent. And I, I want you to see in the lock bar insert, right behind this screw on the other side is the detent ball. And there is, I believe it's a hex key that you put in there and you can screw it clockwise to make the detent stronger or counterclockwise to pull it out and make the detent weaker. So if you like a strong detent or weak detent, you can have your way with the Hoback Roller Detent. It wins the Academy Award for the best detent design. The next Academy Award for Knifedom goes to the Best Deployment Angle, and again, there's a tie on this award. The tie goes to the Browse Blades Razorback. As you can tell, when you fully deploy the flipper tab, you get almost 90 degrees, we'll call it 85 degrees, and also the Medford 187. When you fully deploy it, remember it has that one-half inch flipper tab. When you almost deploy it, it almost comes to 90 degrees. So we're going to say these knives, both of them have about 85 degrees flipper tab deployment and win the award for the best deployment angle. The next award is for the longest flipper tab. Nobody can compete with the Medford 187. It's a full half inch long. I just want to compare it to a short flipper tab, the Positron. Look at the difference there. Oh my goodness. That's why this knife deploys so well and so hard. It wins the longest flipper tab award. The next Academy Award for Knifedom goes for the best detent, and Gavco Knife wins this. Remember how I was uh, talking about Gavco's modest deployment angle. It only goes out about 30 degrees. However, it's one of the most wonderful deploying knives just because of the strength of the detent and the shape of the flipper tab. This is the baby spinner and this is the micro mako, but you cannot push on that and break the detent without the knife just flying out. I don't even think it's employee imp impossible. No matter how softly I pry, try to press on this tab, if I break the detent, it's going to fully deploy. And the Micro Maker is equally as great with its detent. Gavco is a master at the detent, and he wins this award hands down. The next Academy Award for Knifedom goes to the Best Flipper Tab Design, and this is going to be a tie between Gavco Knives and the Hinder Half Track. One of the things these, as you can tell, the Flipper Tab Design is similar in that it has two parts. You can light switch it because it has an opposition there, or you can push button it. But look, the push button is placed at an angle that's about 20 degrees forward, and if you look at where you start to where you want to go, it is flat with that. So you start here, you want to go here, 
and so the flipper tab is flat with that so your finger just fits on it perfectly and when it breaks the detent it just flips out fully that's a great design for a flipper tab as you can tell in the baby spinner it has something similar you can light switch it there or like with uh, the strong detent on the Gavcos you want to button push it it just flies out it's a wonderful flipper tab design the next category of the Academy Awards of Knifedom goes for the best front flipper knife. This category is completely dominated by the South African knife makers because they sort of have a lot of makers who do it. There are two types. One is the upper flipper tab where you reach over with the top of your index finger and you flip it out. This is the Boker A2. That's one way of doing it. But the award goes to the Burger EXK, which is a lower flipper tab. Instead of being at the top, it's at the bottom. So you put the side of your thumb there, and then you flip it open like that. The Burger EXK has a wonderful action. It just falls shut, and then it flies open. And it's just the right EDC size, having a little bit smaller than a 3-inch blade. This is a wonderful knife. And Jim from Walking Reviews recently sold this to me in an auction. So if you guys haven't seen Walking Reviews reviews, you need to sign up for his uh, reviews. They're wonderful. But this is the Burger EXK wins the Best Front Flipper Award. The next Academy Award of Knifedom goes for the knife with the smoothest action. And I'm first going to mention the runner-up, which is the CH3001. It has a wonderfully smooth action, and it is a high-dollar knife, custom maker smooth action. And this knife, just to, to let you know, it costs about $53, from $50 to $60, depending on where you get it. It comes in a variety of anodized colors, blue and green, and it just falls shut. It's perfectly centered, flips out like a rocket. It has the second runner-up best action of any knife I have. It's only $53. But the winner is the Shirogorov Neon. Flips great. The multi-row bearing system just returns the knife smoothly. It is a wonderful knife. The smoothest action goes to the Shirogorov Neon. The next Academy Award of Knife Tune goes to companies, production companies, that consistently make great flippers. And I'm having a four-way tie here. Consistently great flippers are produced by Zero Tolerance. Here is an example of the O450. Every Zero Tolerance knife I own really does good at flipping. And another one that's in the tie is Kaiser knives. I have the Flashbang, I have the Dukes, I have the Mini Intrepid. All are tremendous flippers. And then I go to sort of a production but also a custom. Browse Blades makes custom and they make production knives. This is a Browse Insight. Every Browse knife I have is a great flipper with great flipper design. Jason Browse is a master at that. And then the Shirogorov with their multi-row bearing systems. Everything is smooth about a Shirogorov. They make customs and production models. So the four-way tie for the best production company for flippers is Zero Tolerance, Kaiser, Browse Blades, and Shirogorov. And the last category is for the best companies that are custom makers that make flippers. And I have a three-way tie here, one of which I don't really own, but it's on my grail list. The first is going to be Curtis Knives. I have an example of the F3. The flipper tab design is perfect. It has this modest jimping, uh, good placement of the flipper with relation to the pivot, and... It's just a great flipper. Flips out there great. The blade has the mass of centripetal force to take advantage of Newton's first law of motion. And the second tie is the Alamic Wayfair. Alamic knives, everyone I have, just flips great. And they're a great company. They make beautiful knives and have great customer service. And I'll put a picture up of the third one, which is the Andre Thorburn knives. Everyone I know that has an Andre Thurborn says that every knife that Thurborn makes is a great flipper. So that is the review. Uh, like and sign up as a follower. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.